Marianne Dufresne is an iconic ship in the waters around the South Pole. For 25 years, it's been the only regular way to reach some of France's most far-flung territories. It's a vessel that's often surrounded by albatross and elephant seals. There are hardly any ships here. This is a zone where very few people go. So when we head out, we're a solitary dot in the middle of the ocean. The Marianne Dufresne is a supply vessel and a helicopter carrier. And each time it heads out to sea, it takes a handful of tourists. This is one of the few ships which takes passengers. That's not a cruise ship. It carries cargo, fuel and scientists. As we embark, the steel hull creaks in the wind. Today, we're leaving the ship's home port on Reunion Island with a blast of the horn heralding our departure. On board, the crew gets to work. Jean-Michel is one of the mechanics, and he knows every nook and cranny of the vessel. This ship is something of a dream come true for me. It was built when I was at Merchant Navy School. We were always talking about it. We wondered who could go aboard and when. That was 25 years ago, and it's a dream come true today. The Marion Dufresne is also a chapter in maritime history. In 1772, the Breton explorer Marc-Joseph Marion Dufresne, accompanied by his second in command, Julien Crozet, discovered the Crozet archipelago. At the time, they found it to be too wild, and they didn't hang around. Since then, only a few scientists have ever explored these pristine islands, which are home to a unique ecosystem. The last research mission was in 1986, and since then, no one has set foot there. I hope it stays that way for many years to come. Desolate and untamed, Kose Island is surrounded by sharp rocks. In order to inspect it, a team from the nature reserve has to take to the skies for a reconnaissance flight. These rugged cliffs are home to a huge colony of macaroni penguins. They're instantly recognizable thanks to their long yellow eyebrows. Nearly 18 million of them call Kose home. There are also albatross who come here to nest, this peaceful sanctuary is listed as a World Heritage Site. But let's leave the islanders in peace. Back on the Marion Dufresne, it's lunchtime. In the kitchen and dining area, the Madagascan chefs and waiters are hard at it. They cook and serve for 140 people, with the motto being, it's best to fill your stomach before braving the swell. While the diners enjoy their lunch, Outside, an easterly wind is packing a punch over thousands of kilometers of ocean. But the ship keeps steady and maintains its course in all weathers. Ahead lie the perilous Kerguelen Islands, which make navigating all the more difficult. With the weather stormy, the crew on the bridge is on high alert. There's a route that's already been mapped out. We try to follow that as much as possible, so we don't have any surprises. There are tiny islands on the port and starboard sides, so we can't make any mistakes. Every day is different. Four times a year, the Marion Dufresne brings supplies to the French research stations here. Fuel, food and equipment are all shipped in, and without this help, the scientists wouldn't be able to do their job. We bring in supplies so that we can work here for a year. It's something we look forward to. Hervé is an onboard electrical engineer, and today he's starting his round of inspections. 
He climbs 42 metres up to check the navigational equipment. Radars and anemometers cling to the ship's mast. It's an incredible crow's nest. You can't be scared of heights. I love this spot. You have a clear view of the horizon. All is calm. There's nobody around. Each time it lifts anchor for a new voyage, the Marion Dufresne travels some 160,000 kilometers. That's the equivalent of four trips around the world.